Windows have are available on Windows or have a Windows equivalent. So even Windows losers, I mean users, can benefit from uh, watching the LinuxIntro.com videos. All right, in this one we're going to cover FTP uh, clients. Now there's already a very extensive article under networking FTP on F setting up in depth uh, setting up an FTP server from start to finish. And this is kind of like the complement to that article on setting up an FTP client. Um, <clears throat> Now a lot of you already know how to do that, work with the FTP clients, etc, etc, but a lot of you don't. I've got actually quite a few requests from people that, that never even seen one before. An FTP client is pretty, pretty simple uh, in, in principle. You've got a window on the left which represents your computer, and then you've got a window on the right which represents the computer that you're connecting to. Now, this is GFTP, a uh, GNOME FTP interface, and it's available on Linux. A lot of people have their own preference. There's a uh, FileZilla and KFTP. I, I really don't care for KFTP, and I really don't care too much for FileZilla either. I like um, GFTP because it's got the option to bookmark connections. As you see, I've got the option to skip you know, anywhere on a website that I've uh, got saved in my system. So I have to type in the username, the password, the path for the file, or click on the path. Ooh, lovely time to get the hiccups again. All right, anyway, so the, what you do on the left is you specify the website you want to connect to. And it, where it says host rather uh, these little buttons you don't really need to worry about them just yet but you see where it says host that's where you put in the computer you're trying to connect to if it's your own local computer you could put your own IP address in for or just 127.0.0.1 port it's usually safe to leave that blank after all you're using an FTP client it's safe to assume you're going to be using FTP ports I think that's just there in case you need to override it for example proxy or whatever or, um, port forwarding I don't know anyway that's what this is there leave that blank user <clears throat> this is a pain in the ass because depending on the FTP server that you're connecting to or the FTP client that you're using it could expect your username to come in one of two formats it could expect it to come in just a plain username format, which is what you normally see when you're logging into a website or an, FT, an average FTP client. For example, my name would be my username, and my password would be my password. Well, for some FTP clients, it would actually require you to type my name at, and then the server name you're connecting to, and that would be your username. And, and it's, like I said, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. I, I don't know why some of them do that. But in this case, it would be like James at download.grimmusic or download.alexgrim.com. That would all be the username. But in this case, it's not. Because, for one, I know that I didn't set my server up to do that. And this FTP client does not do that. So it keeps it real simple. And then your password obviously goes in here. And what this does is it can connect to a remote server so that you can work with it. And as you see later, or as you see now, you've got um, a list of files from the remote server. It, right here you see a double dot. And also up here I mean to point out that you see a forward slash. These, the double dot and the forward slash are very important to pay attention to, especially for you Windows users that are not too familiar with the principles of the internet and file systems and FTP. The, the universal um, symbol for file systems to go up one level is dot dot. And so if you've ever seen a file path that was prepended pre with a dot dot, that means go up one level, then go into this folder. So if you double click on the dot dot, which in this case has an arrow pointing up to let you know that means up one level, that means you're going to go up one level in the directory structure. And uh, as you can see right here, the forward slash, for those of you common or uh, used to uh, Linux and Unix-based operating systems and internet programming, web programming, you'll know that the forward slash means that you're already at the top level. You're already at the root level. There's nowhere higher you can go. Now, 
for those of you that are familiar with setting up FTP servers or have seen my FTP server video, you know that that's probably not the root level in the file system you've accessed. That's probably the servers, the root level the server is allowing you. Um, and for security purposes. But anyway, we'll go into a directory. As, as you can see, double clicking the dot dot goes back up one level. Also, a lot of the times you have the option to, uh, give me a moment, to er erase part of the path or manipulate the path with text by typing it in by him. And, um, Anyway, up here you've got the option to bookmark things, add bookmark, and it will ask you to save the, or uh, give a name for the bookmark and to remember the password, and that's optional. If you click remember password with GFTP, I, don't, I can't speak for every FTP client, but I, I, I could be wrong with the other ones, but with GFTP, it'll actually encrypt your password. It's in a plain text file. Even though it's encrypted, uh, they suggest that the algorithm can be cracked that they use to encrypt it, but it's better than having it in plain text. And it's really convenient when you own a lot of websites and you're always working on them. Or you just don't want to type it in every time. Either way, it makes it worthwhile. And um, you can actually edit your bookmarks to put them in folders and to move them around, etc., etc., and it's, it's kind of a nice feature. Now, it does not give you an option to back up your bookmarks. And so what you've got to do, let me find an empty desktop, is um, go into your home directory and then hit Control H to view the hidden files and then go over to GFTP and then highlight the one that says bookmarks and copy it and then paste it into wherever you back up your backups um, and you will have backed up your bookmarks for GFTP. Now remember that let's type in a local address so it's a lot quicker. Ah. And go. Any day now. Oh, it already connected that quick. I didn't even notice it. Alright, uh you know what? I'm gonna have to use a different user. Alright, <coughs> now in this account, I've allowed this person to be able to actually go anywhere they want in my file system uh, because there's multiple places they, they need to go and I can't put them all under one folder because of the way the other things in my file system are organized. So uh, let's try to find a good example. Alright, here we've got the music directory on my file system and over here... I don't want this directory, I want my desktop. Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, over here we got my desktop. And you can see some of the files I'm working on right now. Anyway, you can go into a directory by double clicking on it and double clicking on it until you get down to the files. And you can click and select a file for example, I like this one. And then click this bottom arrow to move it to your computer. And if you have permissions on the server, you can optionally right click and delete that file. Or you can optionally right click and rename the file. And then if you highlight the file on your hard drive, remember this side of the window is for your computer. This side.